Hey, this is Bill DeWeese, uh, pro voiceover talent and voiceover coach, telling you, suggesting, strongly suggesting, that you not start your voiceover career with a pro demo. Hang around, and I'll explain more. But first of all, just a reminder to hit the bell, make sure you get the reminders, subscribe, share, like the video if you like the video, and thanks for stopping by to check it out. I greatly appreciate it. Now, back in the day, when I say back in the day, I'm talking about back when I first got started, almost 15 years now in voiceover. The the wisdom that was shared with those of, of us getting started was, if you're getting started, here's what you must do to succeed. Get a coach, get a pro demo, get an agent. And it was also mentioned, very strongly mentioned, that I should be listed on Voice Bank if I ever hope to get work. Well, I, and I did those things, and I'm not saying that that was bad advice or the wrong advice. I'm what I would say it's not, it's not the complete picture of how to start a voiceover career. As a matter of fact, I found other ways that were far more efficient and profitable to get started. But that aside, if you're getting started in voiceover today, it is a completely different ball game than it was back then, even than five years ago. If you go back and look at some of my YouTube videos from I don't know five, six, seven, maybe ten years ago. I talk about the importance of getting a pro demo right out of the gate. And back five, six, seven years ago, it was important to start your career that way because essentially at that point in time, you were starting off in the deep end of the pool. There was not as many shallow ends, areas of shallow pool to get started in. So you sink or you swim. And having a really strong competitive pro demo was important for survival. Now, fast forward to today, the landscape is much different. Technology has really democratized voiceover, meaning it's given it's given everybody an opportunity. So not only is there the deep end of the pool, and when I say deep end of the pool, I'm talking about bigger clients, bigger budgets, more money, but there's also a, a shallower end of the pool where it's almost like any other career path. In most career paths, it's not either you become CEO or you don't get a job. It's you start off in the mailroom, or when you start a career, you work at McDonald's or maybe some other fast food place, and then you begin to build a resume and skills, and over time, you begin to build a truly professional career. Voiceover is much more analogous to that these days because there are so many other opportunities to get work on other platforms where you have clients that aren't, they're not, they're not the Disney's. They're not the Walmarts. They're not the MasterCards and Chevrolets and so on and so forth. They're the smaller clients with smaller budgets. And so therefore, it's it's almost like, you know, when you first started your work career, you worked at a, a, at a lower paying job just to start making money and to get experience. And it's the same thing in voiceover. That being said, I don't recommend that you get a pro demo right out of the gate, right off the bat. Now, if you've got plenty of money, I mean, you know, you, you, you've got a lot of money and, you know, the, the fact you're investing several thousand dollars in a pro demo is not going to impact your financial situation. I don't think it's a bad thing to do. I'm not saying it's going to hurt you. I mean, a pro demo is, is a good thing. But what I'm saying is it's not absolutely critical that you do it nowadays because with platforms like Upwork, and the audiobook market, and Fiverr, and so on and so forth, there are plenty of opportunities to compete for lower paying jobs from smaller clients where you can begin to generate revenue. Oftentimes people will say, well, Bill, when should I get a pro demo? My advice is when, you have, when you've made the money in voiceover through using a DIY demo, which by the way, I'll talk about in my next video and what that should look like and how you make one of those. But once you make enough money through your own DIY demo, that's the time. For me, it's the most practical time to then invest further in your career to begin continuing to work your way up the ladder to bigger clients, to bigger pay, and so on and, and so forth. So be thankful that today it's different than it was five or 10 years ago. You're not being thrown into the deep end of the pool. That being said, I'm not saying it's as easy as falling off a log. There's certainly a lot of work to be done and, and skill development and so on and so forth. But now it's not either, well, I'm going to get this $5,000, $10,000 job or I'm going to get nothing. No, absolutely not. There are plenty of opportunities. So that's why I strongly, strongly, strongly suggest that you not start off right out of the gate with a pro demo. And the people who would share that advice say that you must do that. 
well, either they're uninformed or they're stuck institutionally in an idea, a framework of the past that's not relevant. And if I'm nothing if not pragmatic, and maybe I should be called the pragmatic voiceover talent because I look through the lens of business because voiceover is first and foremost, it is a business. And you need to think like a business person to succeed in voiceover. So again, pro demos, fantastic. And when you've got the money to do it, you absolutely should. But is it absolutely mission critical to get started in voiceover? It is not. And with a DIY demo, which again, I will explain in more detail and in my next video, you can actually, and I've got plenty of students that are making, you know, money and even good money using their own DIY demo to get started and then taking that money and reinvesting in their career with better demos, better equipment, and so on and so forth. I hope that makes sense to you. I, and, and, and again, when you hear people start to talk about demos and, and, and the importance, again, just think of the bigger picture. Think of what the business is like and where the opportunities lie. And again, I think you'll, you'll find it far less risky and financially stressful to start off without the pro demo and start with the DIY demo. Hey, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Whisper Room. I am eternally grateful for the folks of Whisper Room because if it wasn't for them, I would not have the security of knowing that every day I am producing my best audio quality. And I talked about, you know, working your way up the proverbial voiceover ladder to bigger clients and bigger pay and having great sounding audio consistently is a big part of that. I've been in my Whisper Room now for I don't even remember how many years, somewhere between like 10 and a dozen years. And it has, uh, regardless of what's going on on the outside, it consistently gives me a quiet and well-treated space so that I, every day that I know that I'm putting my best foot forward in regards to my auditions and for the projects that I produce for my clients. And if you want more information about that and other resources that I recommend, please look below in the description and check it out. So again, make sure you hit the bell so you get reminders of new videos. Subscribe if you haven't. Like share, and don't go out today and get that new shiny pro demo if you're just getting started because in my next video, I'll share some advice to help you get started making money right away without putting out the big dollars for the pro demo. Thanks again for checking out and I'll talk to you again soon.